Sri Lanka votes for its next president today after the 2022 economic meltdown. The voting across the country's 13,000 polling stations will close at 4 p.m. local time. Vote counting is expected to start at 9.30 p.m. About 17 million of Sri Lankans, 22 million people are eligible to vote. The election results will be declared on Sunday. A total of 38 contestants are vying to win the top executive post in the South Asian nation. Incumbent President Ranil Vikramasinghe is running for re-election as an independent contestant, building on the success of his efforts to steer Sri Lanka out of the 2022 economic meltdown, which triggered massive demonstrations and forced Gotabaya Rajapaksa to flee the country. Vikrame Singhe is being challenged by Anura Kumara Desanayake from the JVP party and also Sajit Premadasa of the SJB party. Sri Lanka's first past the post system allows voters to cast their votes for their chosen contestants with the candidates securing 50% of the votes or more declared as the winner. Meanwhile, a total of 116 representatives from various international election observation organizations have arrived in Sri Lanka to monitor the upcoming polls. And well, my colleague Ananya Datta gets you this report and everything you need to know about the elections in Sri Lanka today. The South Asian country of Sri Lanka is heading to elections on September 21st. That's this Saturday. The country of 22 million will be choosing its 10th president. And this time, there are over 17 million registered voters. Sri Lanka also allows some advanced voting. So those who cannot vote in person on election day can choose to vote early. This is not a provision for everyone. And this time, a little over 700,000 are eligible. There will be over 13,000 polling stations spread across 22 electoral districts. Coming to the candidates now, it is the highest number of choices Sri Lankans have had in history. There were 39 candidates in total, but sadly one candidate died and he wasn't replaced by the election commission. So even with the number 38, Sri Lankans are being offered a variety of candidates. Among them, four have emerged at the top. Current President Ranil Vikramasinghe is looking for a re-election, banking on his redeemer of Lanka role. Leader of the opposition, Sajid Premadasa, is positioning himself as a champion of the people. Anura Kumara Desanayaka is running on a platform of radical change. The once powerful Rajapaksa family has fielded Namal Rajapaksa, son of former President and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa. With the highest literacy rate in South Asia, the voter turnout has been consistently soaring in Sri Lanka. In the last 10 years, it has jumped by close to 11 percentage points. Sri Lanka is not just the pearl of the Indian Ocean. It has regional and geopolitical significance. Domestic and international observers are already overseeing the preparations. And others from world capitals are keenly watching what happens this Saturday. And well, for more on this, our correspondent Dasuni Athoda is joining us live from Colombo on the broadcast. Hi Dasuni, polls have opened in Sri Lanka and this is the first opportunity that the Sri Lankans have to choose their leaders after the economic downturn and the chaos that ensued in 2022. What is the mood like on the ground right now? Well, a very good morning to all our viewers. Polling just began here in Sri Lanka. And as you can see, even though it just began a mere few minutes ago, there appears to be a steady flow of voters who seem to be coming in to this polling station to cast their vote. Now, keep in mind, there are 17 million registered voters in total who will be going to over 13,000 polling stations across the island to select the country's ninth executive 
president. It is sure to be a very pivotal election here in Sri Lanka, especially right, like you rightfully mentioned, that this is the first big election Sri Lanka is having after a very um, terrible economic crisis that took place in the country uh, in 2022. Radha Suni, as you mentioned, that the Sri Lankans have started flocking to the polling booths there. A total of 38 contestants are running for the president's post, the highest number ever recorded in Sri Lanka. Uh, give us a rundown as to who are the top contenders. Well, like you said, this is a record number of candidates. 39 at the start, now dropped to 38. This is Sri Lanka's longest ballot paper, which has been displayed at all gates at these polling stations. So voters do have an idea on where they can uh, place their vote. In terms of the front runners, unlike previous elections, this is quite a unique one, where it is not a, a purely uh, two-horse race, where we are looking at four prominent candidates. That includes the current president, Rani Obi Singha, the leader of the Samagi Janabalavegi and the leader of the opposition, Sajid Premadasa, as well as the leader of the National People's Power Movement, Anura Kumara Disanayaka, as well as son of former president Mahindra Rajapaksa, namely Namal Rajapaksa. So it will be a four pronged race between these four front runners. Yeah, that's when there are also two monks who are participating in the election race there in Sri Lanka. But I want to talk to you more about the gender balance uh, within the contestant list. There is no woman representation in the presidential elections in Sri Lanka today. What perhaps could be the reasons for a lack of women representation in Sri Lankan politics? Yes, this is an all-male dominated affair. All 38 candidates are male, which means there are no females contesting for the post of president. Keep in mind, Sri Lanka did deliver the world's first female prime minister. A majority of factors, chief of them being economical issues and blocks, along with cultural blocks, are the main reason for uh, females to stop uh, coming in as candidates. Radha Suni, if you can just show us more about where you're standing right now and uh, what is the on-ground situation like in uh, Sri Lanka as the polls have just opened. Yes, so what you see right behind me is a temple in the suburbs of Colombo. So a majority of these 13,000 polling stations will be temples, places of worship and schools, which means each electorate will be having a local area school or a place of worship in which voters can come and cast their vote from 7 a.m. until 4 p.m. Each of them will be having their own ballot card and they can enter, speak to the election officials, cast their vote and like you just saw, leave the premises. Right, Dasuni, the voting will close at 4 p.m. Uh, local time today. While economy takes the center stage, what are the other issues that dominates the polls today? Well, it is clear that there is a voting undercurrent that is expecting massive change in the form of tax relief and reduced costs of living, which is why the current president has been saying it is a difficult period for Sri Lanka, especially post-2022, given that Sri Lanka's uh, economic crisis was purely because previous regimes reduced taxes and increased government coffers, which is why um, a lot of people are not in favour uh, of these policies and are wishing for change, while a certain few feel that it is absolutely necessary for the current president to remain in the helm for another term for the sake of stability. Keep in mind, just two years ago, the situation was quite different when we reported of shortages of fuel and gas, along with mobs of protesters that infiltrated many government buildings. Radha Suni, thank you for joining us. We'll of course be tracking the Sri Lankan polls very closely with you here on Beyond.